guys, it's Lauren here. Now, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make your breaks work as good as they possibly can work. <laughs> you know, so obviously everyone knows when you wheelie, breaks are so important. So I'm going to be giving you guys a few ways to maybe make your breaks work to their full potential. So yeah, let's get on to the video. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys the top three reasons why your breaks are not working to their full potential. Now, number one is your brake pads are worn. This is so common in downhill mountain biking, wheeling, it's just a common thing. So, um, they could be worn down just from how much, you know, we use brakes a lot while wheeling, and when you're downhill mountain biking, you're always on them. So, uh, that could be one. Uh, you might want to check that. And number two is that the pads might be glazed over. So, from using them a lot, they can get kind of shiny and glazed and the friction, there'll be a lot less friction than there would be if, you know, it, would not, it was not glazed. So basically, um, we're going to be teaching you guys how to fix that and how to um, make that problem non-existent. And the third thing is the rotor uh, and, you know, it's also for the brake pads too. Something's on the rotor, you know, it could be dirt, oil, grime, you know, just, it's a good thing to clean off your brakes. So we're also gonna be teaching you how to do that properly as well. So yeah, let's get into it. All right guys, so these are my Shimano XT4 pistons. Uh, these actually, it's funny enough, these came off my Fat Ripper. I did an installation video on that. You could go check it out right there, there. I don't, know, it's, I don't know which corner it is, but it's one of them. Uh, I did an installation video on that, but I'm going to be taking uh, off these pads here. So uh, I really like these brakes. That's why I want them on this bike. Uh, they're about the best you can get. I mean, before you go to like the next, next level, which is a few hundred dollars higher. So uh, yeah, we are going to take apart these pads. So first I have some needle nose pliers here. There's gonna be a little pin right there, right? And I'm gonna grab onto it like this. And I'm going to pull up, just like that, it's right there. And make sure when you guys are fixing bikes, you keep your parts organized. I have heard way too many stories of people losing bolts, bearings, and they end up having to buy all new stuff. And so it's make sure you're organized, okay? So we have that there now. So I'm gonna get my size three Allen key right here. Um, there's gonna be a bolt right here here loosen it like this so I'm gonna come out just like that it's a pretty long bolt um put it right there and now it is going to be super easy you just do this Almost there, there. So these are the pads. Make sure if, we, if you're taking them out, uh, you don't touch them when you put them back in because you know, apparently I've heard, and this makes sense, um, when people touch the pads, they can sometimes, the, the stuff you have in your hands, like just human oils can actually mess up your brakes, I guess, or make it not, not as efficient. So make sure you're just careful with the braking surfaces, like the rotors and the pads. So yeah, now that we have them off, let's get into it. All right guys, so we have the pads here now. Now I've determined that they are a little glazed to me. You know, they're really not that worn at all, but you know, they seem glazed. So this is gonna work great. Now here we have a drywall screen made by 3M. This is even rougher than sandpaper. Uh, it's 120 grit. And this I like a lot because if you look at it, the um, uh, the material that, that gets, you know, kind of sliced off falls away from the brake pad so it basically falls below it right which is good so it doesn't get back onto the pad so now we're gonna grab the pads we're gonna do a uh, like figure eight type kind of movement here because what you want to do if you notice if you look here I don't know if you could see but it's all in like one direction you can just see like the pad goes in like one direction the way the lines are and you don't want that you want it to be like all completely rough in no specific direction. So we're gonna do like a figure eight. We're gonna, we're gonna hold it down like this. We're gonna do it. So that should be good now. We're gonna do the other one.
that. Oh, yeah. Big difference here. So, if you guys look now, it's like rough all over. You can just tell. It just looks a lot better. So, now, to show you guys that it really works, we are going to take this off and look at all of that. That was all came off the brake pad. And so, it really does work. And another reason, you know, like I said, I really like it because sometimes if you use sandpaper and you rub it on the pad like this, it can, some of the contaminated like material can get back onto the pad. But this way, you're gonna put, completely taking it all off. And it's, uh, you know, in my opinion, I think it works a lot better. So, yeah. All right, so we've determined that uh, my, pa my pads weren't really worn at all. But number two, you know, we realized, like I said, that they were glazed, you know? And so what we did was, you know, we roughened them up. We kind of got off all the possible contaminants on them. And the third reason that I said before was that your rotor could be also contaminated. So we're going to be cleaning off this rotor. That way when we put the pads on, it is a brand new feel and it, it just feels, it, it's gonna be a lot cleaner. So that's what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna be using rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. I'd recommend using a paper towel because no, uh, if you sometimes if you use a rag, some contaminants can get off the rag onto the rotor. So I'd recommend a paper towel and uh, some rubbing alcohol. This is just like normal rubbing alcohol from, you can get anywhere. So yeah, we're gonna put this on here. Well, we're gonna wanna do it quick because rubbing alcohol evaporates. So we're gonna pour some on like that. We're gonna do it quick. We're gonna put it right here. And we're going to spin the wheel like this. And just hold it, hold it decently, not too tight so the wheel spins, but just put a little bit of force on the rotor. Just keep going. And now, let's take a look at what came off. Look at all that, guys. That was on our rotor. Now, the good thing is, with rubbing alcohol, is that it evaporates on its own. So we don't have to wipe anything off. It's, it's all set, you know? So you wait a little bit after you do it. Don't immediately use the brakes. Uh, you wanna make sure you just let it dry completely. But look at all that, guys. That was all on our rotor. And that easily could have been uh, a reason why these brakes weren't working so well. And so, yeah. All right, guys, so we're gonna put the pads in now. If you notice here, if you come over here in the light, you can see that there's a little spring that's uh, kind of keeping them together. That little metal piece right there. That's, that, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you get that in perfectly. So now we have these, we're just gonna get them in. So. All right, guys, so I'm quickly just gonna zip tie the brake on and you'll see some footage of me trying out the new brakes. 